Hell's dunnest gloom, or night unlustrous, dark, of every plain's reft, and palled in clouds, did never spread before the sight of veil and thickness like that fog, nor to the sense so palpable and gross. And ring its shade, mine I endured not with unclosed lids, which marking, near me drew the faithful guide, offering me his shoulder for a stay. As the blind man behind his leader walks, lest he should err, or stumble unawares on what might harm him, or perhaps destroy, I journeyed through that bitter air and foul, still listening to my escort's warning voice, look that from me thou part not. Straight I heard voices, and each one seemed to pray for peace, and for compassion, to the Lamb of God that taketh sins away. Their prelude still was Agnes Day, and through all the choir, one voice, one measure ran, that perfect seemed the concord of their song. Are these I hear spirits, O Master? I exclaimed, and he, Thou aimst to right, these loose the bonds of wrath. Now who art thou, that through our smoke dost cleave? And speakst of us, as thou thyself e'en yet dividest time by calends? So one voice bespake me, whence my master said, Reply, and ask, if upward hence the passage lead. O being! Who dost make thee pure, to stand beautiful once more in thy Maker's sight? Along with me, and thou shalt hear in wonder. Thus I, whereto the Spirit answering spake. Long as tea is lawful for me, shall my steps follow on thine, and since the cloudy smoke forbids the seeing, hearing in its stead shall keep us joined. I then forthwith began yet in my mortal swathing, I ascend to higher regions, and am hither come through the fearful agony of hell. And, if so largely God hath doled his grace, that, clean beside all modern precedent, he wills me to behold his kingly state, from me conceal not who thou wast, ere death had loosed thee, but instruct me, and instruct if rightly to the pass I tend, thy words the way directing is a safe escort. I was of Lombardy, and Marco called, not inexperient of the world, that worth I still affected, from which all have turned the nerveless bow aside. Thy course tends right unto the summit, and, replying thus, he added, I beseech thee pray for me, when thou shalt come aloft. And I to him, accept my faith for pledge I will perform what thou requirest. Yet one doubt remains, that rings me sorely, if I solve it not, singly before it you are jeed me, doubled now by thine opinion, when I coupled it with one elsewhere declared, each strengthening other. The world indeed is even so forlorn of all good as thou speak'st it and so swarms with every evil. Yet, beseech thee, point the cause out to me, that myself may see, and unto others show it, for in heaven one places it, and one on earth below. Then heaving forth a deep and audible sigh, brother, he thus began, The world is blind, and thou in truth comest from it. Ye, who live, do so each cause refer to heaven above, e'en as its motion of necessity drew with it all that moves. If this were so, free choice in you were none, nor justice would there should be joy for virtue, woe for ill. Your movements have their primal bent from heaven, not all, yet said I all, what then ensues? Light have ye still to follow evil or good, and of the will free power, which, if it stand firm and unwearied in heaven as first to say, conquers at last, so it be cherished well, triumphant over all. To mighty your force, to better nature subject, ye abide free, not constrained by that, which forms in you the reasoning mind and influent of the stars. If then the present race of mankind err, seek in yourselves the cause, and find it there. Herein thou shalt confess me no false spy. Forth from his plastic hand, who charmed beholds her image ere she yet exist, the soul comes like a babe, that wanton sportively weeping and laughing in its wayward moods, as artless and as ignorant of aught, save that her maker being one who dwells with gladness ever, willingly she turns to whatever yields her joy. Of some slight good the flavor soon she tastes, and, snarred by that, with fondness she pursues it, if no guide recall, no rein direct her wandering course. Hence it behoved, the law should be a curb, a sovereign hence behoved, whose piercing view might mark at least the fortress and main tower of the true city. Laws indeed there are, but who as he observes them? None, not he, who goes before, the shepherd of the flock, who chews the cud but doth not cleave the hoof. Therefore the multitude, who see their guide strike at the very good they covet most, feed there and look no further. Thus the cause is not corrupted nature in yourselves, but ill-conducting, that hath turned the world to evil. Rome, 
that turned it unto good, was wont to boast two sons, whose several beams cast light on either way, the worlds and gods. One since hath quenched the other, and the sword is grafted on the crook, and so conjoined each must perforce decline to worse, anod by fear of other. If thou doubt me, mark the blade, each herb is judged of by its seed. That land, through which Addis and the Pother waters roll, was once the residence of courtesy and velour, ere the day, that frowned on Frederick, now secure may pass those limits, Hussar hath left, for shame, to talk with good men, or come near their haunts. Three aged ones are still found there, in whom the old time chides the new, these deem it long ere God restore them to a better world, the good Gerard, of Palazzo e Conrad, and Guido of Castello, nommed in Gallic phrase more fitly the plain Lombard. On this at last conclude. The Church of Rome, mixing two governments that ill assort, hath missed her footing, fallen into the mire, and there herself and burden much defilled. O oh, Marco! I replied, shine arguments convince me, and the cause I now discern why of the heritage no portion came to Levi's offspring. But resolve me this who that Gerard is, that as thou sayst is left a sample of the perished race, and for rebuke to this untoward age? Either thy words, said he, deceive, or else are meant to try me, that thou, speaking Tuscan, appearst not to have heard of good Corrado, the sole addition that, by which I know him, unless I borrowed from his daughter Gaia another name to grace him. God be with you. I bear you company no more. Behold the dawn with white ray glimmering through the mist. I must away, the angel comes, ere he appear. He said, and would not hear me more. 